Hi, I'm Lynn. Um, this is the third in the series of training workshops specifically for teachers and staff members in education, all those working with school, and in fact, anyone who can kind of adjust and adapt it to your own situations. So today's one is about how do we look after our own mental well-being, especially if we're in a kind of a role where we are the place of support, you know, as people that work in schools we are role models whether we like it or not and therefore students and young people often look up to us in order to kind of have this um, guidance around how they should be coping during these difficult times and changes and if we have an idea of going back into school knowing that we have hundreds of pairs of eyes on us sometimes that can bring up anxieties in general, the return to this new normal, um, it can bring up many different anxieties in us while we're still trying to cope with the here and now. So that's why it's really important that we reflect and we pause and we think about how can we cope and manage our own mental well-being. So before we move forwards, what is well-being? Um, according to the New Economics Foundation of 2008, who conducted a huge study, and also the dictionary, it says that well-being is the state of being comfortable, healthy, or happy. Hmm. Quite difficult and challenging during current times. Um, so they have outlined five steps to be on the way to achieving well-being. And they have divided them into categories, not far off something which I created myself a couple of weeks ago. Um, so one of those is to connect. So the human nature is innate in all of us to connect with other humans um, or animals even, if humans are continuously letting you down as they normally do. So connection, um, finding ways to connect, to be social. Um, this is, according to the foundation, um, one of the ways in which we can increase our well-being. Then we have being active. So um, doing physical activity helps us to tune the body with the mind and enable us to feel better. Um, taking notice, or in other words, mindfulness. Back in 2008, it wasn't such a, a buzzword, but nowadays we might think of that in terms of mindfulness, being aware of, um, you know, noticing changes and things around you, being aware of your senses, your smells, your sights, looking at nature, noticing, you know, the, cha the changes in your environment and so on. Um, learning, so to learn a new skill, um, to develop part of your brain that engages in, um, you know, taking on new, um, exploring new things and, and opening up your worldwide view. Then you have um, to give, like that altruistic um, need within us to, to give something back, to be involved in community and to be, have a sense of purpose is important in developing our well-being. So those are the five steps in which um, are actually very widely used. So although I've just kind of stumbled upon this myself recently, if you go onto Mind website, you will see these five steps to well-being being used here. They're being used frequently in workplaces and um, other mental health charities are giving this as an example to how we can develop and think about our lives in order that we can um, improve our sense of um, being comfortable, healthy in mind and body and to achieve a sense of happiness. Hmm, what do you guys think? Yeah, well, I think that it actually, you know, I think that it is a helpful concept in that if you already have a baseline in which you're generally quite mentally or, and physically well, um, I think that if you're coming from a place where you're, it's been really challenging to be on top of your emotional well-being and to, to cope, 
then I think these five things can seem a little bit idealistic rather than realistic. So if we look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs here, um, you'll see that you know the baseline needs within human beings according to Maslow um, is that we need our real kind of basic life needs met so having the availability of food and drink and shelter um, and these real basic level human needs that's our baseline and we will see during this lockdown that actually for, for many people this has been um, it has become um, you know disrupted we have in schools we have many children that depend on coming into school so that they can get their preschool meals they can eat well um, and have other parts of their basic human needs met at school and it's a cool, school becomes their secure base where their basic human needs are being met um in terms of you know even warmth and you know, luckily we, this has fallen upon the summer where people don't need heating on but in some in some in some scenarios families um can't, can't afford to run the heating all day so in some ways we're very fortunate that this has happened at this time of year and we hope that as we enter into the autumn and winter that you know we will be in a better position um, in terms of being no longer needing to isolate so as we develop from there um, then we start to see other needs that become important and the idea is that those at the bottom are less in, um, you know the, those are, as we grow up the top become less important if the basic needs are not being met so safety and protection within the law and not being th um, at threat of harm for example if that if those needs are not being met then this means that we can't often develop into other other areas of our lives um, if someone is feeling unsafe in the home then other things like finding a hobby and learning how to bake and so are not going to be important and part of their um in part of their coping skills at that point and as we go on the need for belongingness and love need you know love needs relationships and affection and so forth until we start to see um that personal growth and development until we can really reach our potential with the the next two um tiers of the triangle but again um this as well in itself is also quite an idealistic Point of view and the problem that we have with both the five steps to well-being and perhaps even Maslow's hierarchy of needs is that it doesn't take into consideration um, economic problems that might be within the family and the individual cultures and different religions and faiths um, and in fact in, you know in some societies where they do live in poverty and there is a great threat to safety um, in some of those countries, there where you might find the most resilient, resourceful, um, even we could say happy and content people, that in fact you know that without all of those materialistic um, things in their life, they are actually able to really value and appreciate what they do have and the relationships that they have, and you will see them smiling and more and content and resilient despite the fact that um there you know there there is a threat to their to their lives to their health to their safety so moving on um there are issues with this western concept or this idealistic middle class uh, viewpoint of how what things we need to do to to feel well and it almost um, ignores a population of people who aren't fitting into this one size fits all um, uh, treatment plan in terms of how to feel better. So that's why we need to realize human beings are so much more complex than that. Um, we could have all of those needs met, however, we still may struggle with our mental well being. And that's why it's important that we're, we're having this thinking now, and the lockdown has provided an opportunity for people to start to tune in with their own selves. So things that we perhaps 
um, didn't notice about our own selves and, and in fact those people that we're living with have suddenly become magnified and more apparent. The emotions that we have, the way we react to things, the way we communicate prior to the lockdown perhaps was the case that we were far less aware that we were spending less time not only with each other but also with our own selves that this has given us an opportunity to start to look inward with all of our distractions taken away that we begin to look in and, and to then understand and evaluate ourselves and sometimes that is actually something that causes us to become really discombobulated it can be something that really we almost don't want to face because perhaps all of the distractions and the masks that we put on when we leave our homes to go to work they they've come off so we feel exposed and sometimes when we see those things within our own self we we don't want to see them or we try to push them away but there's nothing to distract us from them so it can cause us to feel mentally and emotionally unwell so let's move on when we're thrown into a difficulty we have an innate human nature to want to survive to survive this this problem this breakdown of a relationship for example um, a loss of some kind because if we don't throw ourselves into some form of distraction it causes us to become overwhelmed and to continue to focus and ruminate over those thoughts which continues which in the end can make us ill and unable to function on the other parts of our lives and, and the activities that we need to do so it is in our nature to want to grab onto certain behaviors people um, actions to be able to work through the the difficulties that we're experiencing so we've been bombarded or i have at least with social influences um who at the beginning of the lockdown was talking about how this is an opportunity an amazing opportunity to do to learn a new hobby or to to do a course that perhaps you've always wanted to do so people were signing up for online courses um those who were able to get to the diy centers and grab stuff were able to you know before the lockdown um were doing up their homes and doing things like this which is all great and wonderful but it's also again it's something that not everyone might have access to um in order to survive our problems we, we need to find a way to cope and as human beings we we are actually quite good at that although it might feel to some that they're useless and and um unable to function and what that means to them in fact actually we it is part of our nature to be able to do it and it's really just those um internal messages or messages from family over the years that cause us to have those negative thoughts about the way that we're coping um and also with the um you know with the unavailability or the lack of um role modeling that we've had from our parents and carers to teach us how to actually cope we could end up turning to um, more negative behaviors in order to cope but either way what we're doing in our mind we might think that we're not coping or we're not managing but we have adopted some form of behavior to be able to sustain the difficulty that we're in so the purpose of a coping mechanism be it positive or negative is to fulfill a need that we have within ourselves and often that comes from a place of unmet needs um, over the history of our lives so when we're thinking about how can we develop our sense of well-being and create coping mechanisms to deal with our emotional conflicts and difficulties we need to ask ourselves what do we need you know ask yourself what do i need what is it so at the point of distress at the point where, where emotions become overwhelming we need to um, stop firefighting with ourselves and actually need to look at what is the cause of this fire what is the cause that is um, 
that is, you know, triggering me to actually be able to think or feel in this way. And once we get underneath that and we explore what the needs are, we can then start to create a lifestyle for ourselves that is nurturing and self-caring. So coping mechanisms. Prior to the lockdown, if we were all thinking about, if we were all, if we all had a way of distracting ourselves and to survive whatever our lives were like prior to the lockdown, we need to um, think about that and compare it to how we're feeling now. So one way in which we can do that within the busyness of our lives and the different hats that we might be wearing in isolation, whether we're parents or we're, we are a son or a daughter, you know, living with elderly or living with dependents, whether we are, we have our own business or, you know, we're juggling two jobs, one job or the whole household. And then on top of that, to look after ourselves can all seem really overwhelming. So, my idea is to write down what helped you before the lockdown so to write down everything that you did prior to the lockdown that you believed back then was something that you would turn to something that you would do in order to help you to feel better and i'm talking about more positive behaviors here so you know going for a walk go for a run uh, meeting your friend um these kind of things so write them down what helped you before the lockdown and then ask yourself what need was I meeting for example for me I enjoy running so the need that running um, fulfilled was um, it was quite spiritual being out in nature and running it gave me a sense of purpose and it also um, fulfilled the need of burning off excess adrenaline, which causes symptoms of anxiety. So it takes takes the edge off of nervousness and, uh, you know, and helps to balance the central nervous system. So that was the need that it was meeting. Then ask yourself, is my coping mechanism still working for me? Well, in some ways, yes, it, um, I've been able to continue running, but it's been less often and it hasn't been so far. And I haven't met up with um, other runners in my running club. So therefore, you know, it's changed and it's not as good as. So yes, my coping mechanism still works, but it's not as good as, which means the need that it was meeting, um, you know, the need is still there and that it's not meeting it as much as it was before. So I still have some symptoms of anxiety and I still have um, a bit of a lack of kind of purpose and feel like less of a sense of achievement because it hasn't been, I haven't been able to meet it with that in the same way during lockdown. So yes, keep doing it. Ask yourself if it works, keep doing it. Don't change anything on, or, or see you know, if it's helping, then continue in that. Can it be adjusted? Can the external factors be adjusted to allow me to use my coping mechanism? So I'm thinking about people perhaps like parents who you used to do something where you were able to leave the kids at home, you went out um, and now, all the external factors around you mean that you are no longer able to, to engage in that activity that you, you did prior. So is there something you can look at? Is there anyone that can support you? Is there other ways in which you can allow the external factors to be put into place to enable you to start reusing that coping mechanism? If not, then now you need to think about what new coping mechanism can I try? And one of the ways in which you can think about what that is, is to identify the need. So if you identify the need, then you can look at how can I meet that need in a different way, with a different activity or with even with a different person. Um, so that's why that's what that's the way forward to identify the need. So as I gave an example of running earlier, another example might be meeting your friend and offloading and having a, a chat, 
you know, it was fulfilling the need of being able to offload your problems, taking the edge off of things, you know, hearing yourself think perhaps, is there other ways in which you can do that? Um, you know, and, and so on and so forth. There's some other examples there. So just thinking about how can you adapt to, to meet them and fulfill the need that you have within yourself that is causing the emotional conflict. So, whoa, you know, let's just stop for a minute. What do I mean by this? So this is all here and now stuff really, isn't it? So we're trying to cope with the here and now. Yeah, at the same time, it almost felt like everything that's happened before the lockdown has almost been like parked and abandoned. You know, we're going to start seeing the, you know, traffic violation tickets stuck on it soon because we've. it's almost like we've abandoned or for many of us, we feel like this part of our life has just kind of abruptly come to an end and almost overnight circumstances change we got put into lockdown and it was almost a sense of panic especially if you're working in a place like a school or an institution where you are in a position of caring for others and you feel like you need to quickly um put so much stuff in place to be able to um to be able to park things and and have your situation changed and for many people out there there may not there may have been little change and in some ways some resentment towards um those who are able to stay at home and if you're in a position where you're a key worker and you have to continue to go out and feel as though you're putting your life at risk and your family's life at risk this can be even more difficult so we have a sense that we haven't really coped with what's passed because when you're in a situation where you feel like you're firefighting continuously trying to put out a fire which continues to to be ignited we're not able to get to go back and to explore the things that were happening to us prior to the lockdown it feels like a million years ago so we then have managing the here and now which is tricky enough in itself and for many people, the inability to fully cope and to feel emotionally and mentally um, uh, disrupted in this here and now stage of our lives can be really um, anxiety inducing when we think about the, Im the imminent, 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 the imminency of preparing for this new normal, of, of having to go um, for things to change again and and not knowing what that looks like we've seen a lot of mistrust around the um leaders of society who have given very confusing messages and that can feel really unsettling when you feel that there is um no one there to really to kind of hold us and to give us a sense that they are in control and that we're able to then trust them and when you think about attachment, which we've been talking about over the last couple of weeks, that in order for us to feel secure, we need to feel that um, we're able to trust in, so that we can go out and explore, knowing that um, you know, our needs are going to be met and knowing that we're safe. And at the moment, it does feel really unsafe. The thought of going out into um, this new normal and, and things and the restrictions to become looser almost can feel as if we're going into the heart of the virus and what that can bring up in us and, and different fears. So as I said, if you're in a position where you're working in a school and we as, as workers feel like that, then what about those hundred pairs of eyes that will be looking towards us for support when we know that we are role models and we are in a position where we are the, the carer, then what does that mean for us? It means that we really do need to self-care and look after our own selves. Um, and it can all feel very overwhelming. And this is a very natural response to a situation that we're currently in, whether when there's change, when there's loss, um, when there's trauma, it is something that does cause us to feel very unsettled. And it might be that we have one day 
that's amazing and we feel really positive and we you know we're doing some of those five steps to um well-being we're we're learning new things we're developing we're being creative we're helping and we're giving and we're giving back to ourselves and we have a great sense but the next day can be the complete opposite of that and the idea of um any of those five things can seem like too much and too too unrealistic and we might ask ourselves how have I gone from one day where I feel nurtured and and um, I feel very mentally strong to the very following day or even within the same day to completely um, feel as if things are falling apart yet this is also a very natural part of um, of loss and a, and a natural part of change and a natural part of the anxiety around um you know of the unknown and uncertainty so if you were joining this video in the hope of seeing tips and um you know a guideline around what to do to feel better what to do to manage emotions and to um cope better then i suggest you just go on google and and google that in because there are hundreds and thousands of um suggestions by by psychologists by well-meaning influencers by mental health charities even the nhs there are many um many posts and articles out there where you can get those tips and most of them in my opinion are coming from a middle class um idealistic viewpoint and are in fact ignoring the very people in which this is meant to be helping and supporting which are those people that are genuinely struggling emotionally and finding it hard to cope because if i am in a position where i'm struggling then when I hear someone saying, suggesting that I get out the baking kit and I, and I learn how to bake, for me, it can feel very patronizing and that these people don't get it. I'm just trying to get through the day. I'm just trying to get through the hour. The idea of um, being creative and, and exp explorative at that stage when you're just trying to survive is really difficult. Therefore, your recovery and your action plan the balance that you get between um, recovering, resting, reflecting, all the R words basically, and the actions, you know, that balance is something in which only you know how to attain. You, only you know what will work from one day to the next. And I guess my message is, is about how do you develop your awareness of self? because it is your own awareness of your own self, where you've come from, where you are now, what you're worried about for the future. It's that self-awareness that is going to be able to help you to think about what's going into your recovery and your action plan to, to work on your well-being. Are, is your well-being you know, up here with the eights, nines and tens where you can start to think about new hobbies and courses and, and this kind of thing? Or are we further down on the spectrum at, at that moment in time where wrapping the duvet around you is the best course of act, action that you can take to feel better? And to know that that is an action and not a non-action because by knowing that this is something you need something to to stop to rest to recover to to do those things is an action in itself and to stop beating ourselves up over the fact that sometimes we do just need to go into a room that's quiet and and just rebalance the body re-earth and and ground ourselves so tips are out there but only you can tailor make your recovery and action program to to nurture yourself you know what ingredients you need to help make yourself feel better on any given day and time 
if you do need any support with that, there are so many places out there where you can obtain that. Um, in particular, there is a 24 hour, seven day a week support line um, there right at the top. And this is actually um, targeted at people that work in schools and in education. So whether you're a teacher or you have another role within a school, this is the one for you, 24 seven, um, online coaching and counselling support and it, and I would really recommend that alternatively you can go to Mind, Place to Be has some really great um, resources on there as well and of course there's always Samaritans and those that are young that perhaps have come upon this um, then Childline is for you. So I hope this has been um, in, uh, inspiring in some way and given you some idea around um, how to support your own mental well-being and just know that you you are not alone that we literally are in hashtag in this together and that there will always be someone there that to support you and if you need signposting with that then i am here to support you in that with the um, details there at the bottom so i hope you found this useful and do make sure you listen to the other workshops if you haven't already and i look forward to the next one take care and bye